Well, look at this cute little thing. It's an Abarth 850 TC. So these are actually based on the Fiat 600, but Abarth, of course, tuned these things up for racing. And they were the hot ticket for small displacement back in the day. But I'll save the history lesson for another day. We got some issues with this one. We were taking this thing out on a test drive to see if we could identify some clunking in the rear. And all of a sudden it shifted into third and stayed there. The shifter was just a loose wiggle stick. I pulled up this little inspection plate right here and couldn't see any problems with the shifter up here. So we knew it was in the back. Fortunately, whenever I got under the car, I could see the problem right away. This is your shift shaft right here, and this is a little coupler, and that's the shaft going into the transmission right there. The bolt that attaches the coupler to the transmission shaft had fallen out. Now fortunately the bolt on this side of the coupler up here was still in. I was able to remove that, and hopefully you can see it has a kind of a funny taper shape to it. I had to get a new bolt and replicate that taper because it screws into the coupler and this taper goes into a pocket on the shaft here. So let's get this put back together and see if my new bolt works. All right, we have a shifter again. Now I'm gonna Loctite those bolts so they don't fall out again. Just medium strength Loctite is gonna be sufficient. Don't wanna overkill it. So we got the shifter fixed, but now we have a problem of a squidgy brake pedal. And it's kinda doing something very strange where if you pump it rapidly, you actually lose brake pressure. And normally, you know, you're pump up solid, but yeah, it's kind of weird that when you pump it rapidly, it loses pressure. And if you push and hold, it kind of loses a little bit of pressure. Makes me think there's a leak somewhere, but it's kind of interesting. I've been looking, can't find one. So on these cars, they have a rear brake drum and normally 600s have a front drum too, but check out these cute little discs. Abarth put front disc brakes on it. And also this caliper is kind of interesting. It's got a single piston in the back and two pistons in the front. Now this rotor I think has kind of seen better days. You see little chips out of the side of it. And also it kind of seems to be warped as well because he spin it around and it drags. And unfortunately the one on the other side is dragging like that too. But yeah, it's funny. Just look how thin it is and tiny. Oh, and also notice how it bolts on. It actually bolts on to the back side of the hub here. Pretty interesting. Now this car has had some recent brake work done. You can see brand new rubber hose up here on the front. And I think they also rebuilt these calipers. If we swing around underneath the car, you can see the brake master cylinder right here. It's got two hard lines that go to the front brakes and then the single one that runs in this tray all the way to the back. And there's a little proportioning valve that sends it to the two rear drums. But yeah, I checked for leaks all around the master cylinder and looking for leaks all along these hard lines. Can't find any. It's also kind of neat to see just how the pedal arrangement works down here. You have your little return springs for your pedals underneath the car instead of inside. And you have your cables for your accelerator and your clutch going down this tray all the way to the back. This right here is going to be your brake pedal. And you know, I can actuate it with my hand somewhat. I would expect that to be stiffer and not actually be able to do that by hand, but I don't know. I think I'm going to call an expert and see if that's normal. And taking a look at where the rod goes into the master cylinder, I don't see any leaks there either. And I don't know how old this master cylinder is. It could be that the seals inside of it are shot and it's leaking inside. And that could be a possibility. You know, just leaking past its own pistons. And you see the rotor over here isn't really even any better shape than the one on the driver's side has all these little nicks and stuff in it. The surface of the rotors actually look okay, but yeah, they're definitely warped. How they stick and drag like that. At the back to the driver's side, you can see where the hard line comes out of the tray coming from the front, goes up into this little valve right here. I call it a proportioning valve, but it's probably just a little three-way valve. It's got some sort of little electrical connection on it. And then from there, you have a hard line that goes over to the other wheel and then one that comes over here, and you have a short rubber hose right here, which these look kind of old. They're not new like the front ones are. And then the rubber hose goes over to a hard line that's inside the trailing arm, and then over to the drum. Now I need to get these drums off because the previous mechanics were actually saying that one of these drums isn't fitting right. They both seem nice and tight just sitting on the car like this. They were actually thinking that the clunky noise was coming from the brake drums. They said one of them was loose, but it seems tight to me. The one on the other side does too. But I'm going to take them off and see if I see anything obvious. 
All right, so check it out. Here's how the brake drums go together. They're held on by a bolt and this little wheel locator pin. And of course you have a nice thick aluminum spacer because race car. And then you have the brake drum itself, which is supposed to fit nice and snug up against the hub and not supposed to be any wiggle at all on this guy, right? This one's actually pretty, pretty snug on there. Well, let's go take a look at the other one. So when I took this one off, the first thing I noticed was there's this plastic ring on there. I don't think that's supposed to be on there. I'll ask my expert if what he thinks of that, but yeah, that don't seem right. But then let's put the drum on and check that out. Even pressing it in so it's on there nice and firmly. And I don't know, but I think, I think that does kind of sound a bit like the noise that we were hearing. But the thing that doesn't really make sense to me is I don't understand how that would be even making that noise, even if it is a little loose like that. Because not only is it sandwiched in with the spacer and these bolts, but the wheel bolts hold it in too. In fact, let me just throw it back together real quick and we'll see. Yeah, I mean, even though it's loose when it's not bolted in, when it's bolted in, I, it doesn't move at all. Not convinced that's the culprit of the noise, but I do think that we should probably go ahead and replace these drums. Also just noticed, I don't think these are the original studs that the wheels go on, because it looks like this has kind of been fabricated here. The flange part of it is just a nut. I don't know, maybe it was tack welded and ground. I think I'll throw some Loctite on there and run it back up to where it belongs, to like right there. Hopefully that'll hold it. Another thing I wanted to show you is, I think the hubcaps on this thing are just super cool. It's got this little bar that goes over and a stud on it. And this is the hubcap. It looks like a knockoff style. It actually threads on. Just like that. <laughs> Isn't that cool? You know, another one of the things that makes these cars really unique is the front mounted radiator. And I found a very interesting modification to this one. So it's got coolant pipes that go all the way back to the engine back and back. Well, this one has a very high tech plastic spacer <laughs> to keep the coolant hoses from rubbing on the frame here. <laughs> so yeah, after talking to the expert, he agreed we should replace the brake master cylinder and also those uh, brake drums. Fortunately, the brake drums are standard 600 parts and I believe the master cylinder is too. I'm gonna have to look that up, make sure. So I think we'll be able to find those parts no problem. The rotors on the front are special Abarth parts. So I don't know, we're gonna have to find those somewhere. Or it could be one of those cases where they're not really that bad. <laughs> as long as it's not causing vibrations in the steering, you know, as the rotors are going flump, 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 flump. It, maybe it's not anything to deal with. And while going over the car, I found a couple other little tiny little problems. Probably not anything you actually want to work on. The steering box is leaking. I mean, it, they probably just leak. I don't know. Not Probably not that big of a deal. Just something to keep an eye on. Maybe top it off like once a year or something like that. And it kind of looks like the transmission seal where the shift actuation shaft like goes in is kind of leaking. Again, is that something that really needs to be done? Probably not. But stay tuned for the brake master cylinder on this guy as well as the drums. Oh, and you know what really has me geeking out about this car is that, yeah, I know by the time these cars were being built, he probably had a whole team of people working with him and he might not have actually worked on the cars himself, but there's a chance that Carlo Abarth actually worked on this car himself. And you know, I, I mean, I'm sorry, but being a Fiat nut, I'm just geeking out over that. That's so cool. Well, bye. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.